I'm Matt Whitbeck, a home builder and remodeler from Saratoga Springs, New York. Building smarter, better designed, and longer lasting homes using proper techniques and building science is my passion. I'll be talking to pros around the country about issues that affect their daily work and how they overcome them. This is Building Science. Hey, so we're out here in Saratoga Springs this week, my hometown. Gonna be meeting with Rich Martin. I'll tell you, when I think about Saratoga, the New England, upstate New York area, I think about a lot of old inventory. We have some of the oldest houses in the country up here. We had two and 300 year old houses, some old post and beam, rough cut timber houses. So it's really interesting. Even though we got a, a fast growing area and the new construction is booming out here, it's really important as a carpenter in these areas, if you know how to do that stuff, it'd be really interesting to see what Rich is up against while he's trying to re-level an old floor right now. So we look forward to going out and seeing him. Morning, Rich. Morning, Matt. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Well, thanks for having us out here today. Uh, so you got a pretty interesting project. We're working on an old house. Uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on here and uh, what got you into this business? Well, what got me into the business is that I knew construction, I guess, from when I was a little guy. So I've been doing this for 51 years. Uh, also have an inspection business. We've inspected over 7,000 houses. What's nice about that is I get to see things wrong in a lot of places from a lot of different builders and so forth. But this here project is a house that I estimate was probably built in the 30s or the 40s. And what we've done is totally gutted the inside of this house so we can see the framing nature of all the way it's put together. The additions that were made, the original house, everything's a little bit different. On this particular house, before we get too carried away, we're gonna adjust these floors. This was a porch at one time sitting out here and they converted it into part of the living space. Floors are a little out of whack. Some of the other floors are out due to either structural issues with the foundation and bug infestation. We've got some plates that have been eaten up. So we're gonna to try to straighten that thing out and uh, that's our first goal. So when you get into something like this and you're gonna redo a floor system, what makes you really decide on how you're gonna attack that project? Well, I think you're looking at both the top side and the bottom side and to what extent we think it's going to take to raise that floor up and level it. Based on what we see, whether it's a foundation issue or the plate deteriorating, uh, we'll make a decision on how we're going to take it uh, apart and, and uh, replace what we have to replace. They've added to the floor. Maybe adding to the floor is not an option anymore. We've got some decent hardwood floors in here that we'd like to match up to. So that's part of the consideration also. Well, let's go look at what we got. Take a peek. Awesome. On inside here, Matt, and you can see what we're what we're looking at here. In fact, as you come through, you can see that was the original door to the house, and this was a porch that was, I think, added or adjusted later, roof-wise and so forth. And as you look in here, you can see some of the situations that we're going to address. You can see that somebody took what I think is the original porch floor and tried to level that out a little bit. You look beyond that floor. If you come over to this section here, we even see that the original floor to the house is raised up. On a, and why it's raised right here is because of a stone foundation for the house sits here. So one of the things that can cause a situation like this is either bug infestation because the support structures have been eaten and, or they've gotten wet and rotted away, or we've had outside pressure from roof runoff water pushing in on the foundation, creating it to move. So there's a number of different ways that these situations can be created. But I think for a contractor to come in here and to give a scope of work or a budget plan, the only way to know what you've got if you're going to construct and, and rectify these issues is to tear the whole skin off the house. And so we know what the it's pretty difficult to give you as a client a price on something like this until we get to this stage and we evaluate what we have to do to make it structurally correct. That's a really big deal and a great tip for everybody to say, you know, structure everything so that you can do that peel back, understand what you're dealing with before you get yourself, you know, bound in a situation where you don't really know what you're dealing with. So have a, a pre and post plan of demolition. If we're going to level that floor, the first thing I look at is what am I going to do with the steps? 
Sure. Okay, I've got an eight inch rise coming up here. If the contractor doesn't think about, oh my goodness, if I level that and raise that two inches, what am I going to do with that extra two inches? And do I have a cost involved in correcting those steps coming into? I've seen them so bad where the way to correct them is with two five, four by fours. You put them out in the front lawn with a piece of plywood and you write for sale on it because there is nothing left here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so we've got a situation where somebody's got to come in and say the owner comes in or whatever and says, look, the contractor's saying this is what we've got to do to fix this. Two things that we need to fix a house to any extent. We need a roof that doesn't leak. Yep. Okay, no sense putting new sheetrock and insulation in this if we don't have a sound roof. And we need the foundation and a grade around this house that keeps the roof runoff water away from the foundation. If we take care of those two things, you can build a house that'll last for hundreds of years. It's those two elements that fail that take a house down. Good. Uh, the pest infestation doesn't happen until the wood gets wet. And the wood gets wet because we don't have proper drainage. So consequently, we have whatever happened down here. We're gonna get into crawl space, we're gonna get into the basement, and we're gonna see what we have to do to elevate this and level it all up. So we go downstairs and take a look then. Let's take a peek. All right. Entrance to the crawl space, we put this little tent up because we've been running in and out of here and pulled off this secure weatherproof entrance to the crawl space. And I just wanted to point out to you, Matt, here, we talked about it before, about one of the problems with, with structures uh, settling down or, or, or out of level floors. And this is the plate that came out of this building right here, set on top of these block. And when you look at this, the mud indicates that that was termites. And if you look here, you can see the termite tunnels coming through the cracks of the block, working their way up to get into the plate. When we took this out, the termites were gone, but this is full of carpenter ants in here. They come in later, but all those, those fins like that is an indication that the termites. And just of interest, we didn't have termites up in this part of the country 40, 50 years ago. They've been migrating slowly from the south. And as you know, termites live out somewhere out in the lawn somewhere. But the carpenter ants, after they moved in, they're within the house and the structure itself. And again, they only attack wood that's wet. So that's why it's so important about keeping the water away from these uh, the foundation walls. So we're going to climb in here and see what we've got. One of the things you see is the, whoever put the insulation and in, put it in upside down. Yep. This should have been against the living space instead of the coal space in there. Not that that's a huge detail, but as you can see, it's all coming down and we're going to take it all out. Okay, so that vapor retarder, and that's often done incorrectly. We see that a lot that's correct. traveling around, that the vapor retarder wants to go to the condition side the warm, of the, the warm, building. The warm side, that's exactly right. So then somebody came down to add a little bit more protection and they put up this rigid uh, foam and that just made it worse because now we've got two vapor barriers and the con condensation builds in between them. As you look around at the whole foundation, you can see that the plate that we just talked about outside with the termites is completely gone underneath that section and that these floor joists are not sitting on anything that would even create anything level. You can also see that the foundation wall here it's got some cracks in it, and it was laid up by somebody that I wouldn't say was a professional mason, but this needs to all be pointed up in here so that we can structurally. It's not too bad as you look down the wall. There's a couple of block out or in. That can be adjusted when we raise this floor up. And the reason we're saying raise the floor up because what I see from down here, Matt, these floor joists look to be in fairly decent condition. They do. They're not bad. They're rough cut lumber, but they don't look bad at all, which indicates to me that maybe we can come down here, put a beam in here, a drop girder, a couple of jacks, and raise this thing up high enough to get it up no matter what the level is upstairs, but to be able to put a plate in all the way around with sill seal. And then what you would do on this grade in here is dig this out a little bit and probably pour what we would call a rat slab, which is just a concrete cap across this, maybe two inches thick, polyethylene on the ground first before the concrete so it stops the moisture from coming up into the area. Once we secured this thing and got it straight, the new joist and it's jacked up into place, somebody could make a decision, I'm going to insulate the exterior walls instead of the floor. That makes sense to you. If we can stop the coal from coming in the wall, we don't need so much of this insulation. 
and depending upon the heating system that you have you might even condition this space by bringing some heat in whether it be by warm air or a piece of baseboard element hot water so that we keep the dampness out of here by keeping this heated. If we keep this heated we can eliminate ventilating and worrying about this because it gets damp. And then like we talked about before also create a grade outside to keep all the roof runoff water away from this foundation. Those effervescence that you see up there on the block are an indication that there's water outside of those block. That's the water that comes through the block and evaporates just like if you had a pan of water on the stove and you boiled it, you'd be left with those. So just to be clear, Rich, what I'm hearing you say is you guys are gonna re-level this floor out by removing some of the dirt, prepare everything down here, you're gonna remove all the old insulation, get it out, pour a new slab down on the base, and that will allow you jacking this floor up to the right elevation, installing a new, a new sill plate with sill seal, everything like that, repoint all of the, uh, the old block work and reseal everything before the insulation goes on. Then you're gonna be able to uh, insulate the perimeter walls, making sure that you have all of these pieces and parts, you know, set up yeah. and, uh, and structurally secure, weatherproofed and insulated well uh, before you kind of move on to the finishes. The reason we're down here is because once we got into this space and we saw the moisture issues that have created or helped created some of this uneven floors, we now appreciate that. We need to put the new plates in. We need to add those things to stop the termites and the carpenter ants and the rodents from getting into it. So I don't want you to think that we're doing more than we have to as far as the scope of work of raising the floor, but these are things that once everything is stripped and we pull down the ceiling, we now know are part of the entire process to put the house back the way it should be. Yeah, and with these modern houses, I mean, it, it's very different when we think about houses that were built in the 20s as opposed to a house now. When we start thinking about dramatic climate changes from the outside to inside of the house and thinking about when people only really worried about heating the home and now we're worried about heating and air conditioning and the house has to react quite a bit different. So, you know, making sure that we can get this house up to modern building science standards to make sure that it can have both the heating side of it and the air conditioning side of it and be protected from all those things. I think that's really great. All the pieces and parts that you're adding in here to make sure this stays climate controlled in a four season climate, that's a really great thing. One of the things that we have today because of the energy crisis of 77 is we've tightened the houses up. Just like the two products over our head, this vapor barrier and the condensation was created because we didn't have this back in the 20s and 30s. We had houses that had seven air changes an hour. Now that we've tightened the house up to save energy, we're subject to new levels of problems. And the three largest are radon, carbon monoxide, and mold. And those three things are new relative to what they were in the 20s, 30s, and 40s. I think that's probably important to us anyway as contractors to make sure we address all those issues and not walk out of here just by leveling floors. All right, let's get to work. Let's go. So this is a layer of flooring they just kept cribbing things together to try to raise it back up. And you see as it as the floor descended, they added more shims here and then slowly kind of took shims away as they got up to the end to make sure that they could re-level the floor and then use the plywood base over top of that to try to create a more consistent substrate to catch back up to the old uh, ship lap subfloor in the original building. Go ahead, Lester. I put that two by right in there. You ready, boss man? Yes, ready.
So it was really awesome to be able to get my hands dirty today and help everybody out. Uh, really great project as we're reshoring this old house floor. It was really cool to start stripping everything down and come up with a great game plan as to how this particular situation was going to unfold itself. So because we had found out that the addition was originally a porch and the entire structure was built at a slant. We decided to jack the entire building up to get it back to level. So you can see where we got down into the uh, crawl space today, put the jacks in, lifted everything up, put new sill plates in. And then because we had some extra time with the carpenters, we got up onto the top floor, put some of those pieces in the, the purlins onto the floor to shim everything back up to the right elevation, kicked in some three quarter inch uh, tongue and groove subfloor to get that flush floor across with the uh, old and the new so they'll be able to blend this floor back together really nicely when they put the rest of the finished hardwood floor on so in the meantime we're going to wait they get the concrete to do still down in the basement they got to get that chimney down patch the roof back in and i think the weatherization process is kind of a big integral part of that to make sure that uh they're waiting on keeping everything dry to get the concrete done then they'll get the chimney out get everything in place and uh maybe get another day or two here thanks for watching building science saratoga springs for more building science and in-depth how to's check out our videos This demonstration is intended for professionals only. Homeowners should not attempt these projects without first consulting a licensed professional.